I'd love to speak to you about how we can support small businesses. I'm going to mainly just um, look at the talk very briefly, just highlighting the, the macro environment of entrepreneurship in South Africa. I'm going to be looking at how is South Africa performing, um, what can be done to address our performance, and a call to action to partner with us uh, as part of Psyche Nation Building Initiatives. So firstly, how are we doing? Uh, I saw that there's actually a more recent GEM report out, but unfortunately South Africa is not, did not participate in that particularly world, that global entrepreneurship monitor. So I'm going to be, be speaking to you this afternoon based on 2016, 2017 results, but I can assure you that the trend is actually continuing. So first of all, there's a drop in perception of the opportunity and the capability of people from previous years that they can start businesses. That is a bit of a worrying factor, why are we dropping in our, our belief that we can do this, that we can become entrepreneurs? Secondly, we don't believe that we have the required skills uh, to start a business. In fact, South Africa rates 55 out of 62 countries, quite close to the bottom. Thirdly, Entrepreneurial intentions, that's the intentions for, of people to start businesses, are four times lower in South Africa than in the Africa region. Thirdly, total early stage entrepreneurial activity, and that is the principal measure that the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor uses to measure er entrepreneurial activity. This has dropped by 25% and is 2.5 times lower in South Africa than the Africa region speaks a little to what we are seeing at the moment. Why are there other people starting businesses and we are not? Okay, let's continue. Oops, sorry. One of the lowest, one of the lowest established rates, um, we in South Africa have one of the lowest established uh, business rates for in, in, the, in, in terms of the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor. So we are 61st out of 65 countries. That means that we are five times lower in South Africa than in the Africa region. Sixthly, 75% of South African entrepreneurs are opportunity driven. So now this is a good news, which is substantially higher than the Africa region and in cases um, higher than efficiency dri uh, driven economies worldwide. So here is a good point. We are actually um, very opportunity driven when we are starting businesses and we can see that we are higher in terms of that. Again, this speaks to actual pockets of excellence that exist in this country and those are the pockets of excellence that we would want to expand and build on. Then the highest rate of opportunity driven entrepreneurship was recorded in 2016. Um, and this has been the highest rate of opportunity-driven entrepreneurship since 2008. So people are definitely starting businesses out of opportunities. And then eighthly, 67% or two-thirds of entrepreneurial businesses are closing for financial reasons. Now that's a huge, that's a huge, huge figure, right? Two thirds of our businesses. So what can be done? And I, I wanted to propose that we actually look at this from three main fronts. Firstly, we need to address the first challenge. There are not enough South Africans who have the intention to start entrepreneurial businesses. And that, as I said earlier, that is linked to the perceived opportunities and also their belief in their own capabilities. Secondly, we need to address um, the challenge that two-thirds of our businesses are closing due to financial reasons. Either they are not profitable or they have problems accessing finance. Thirdly, this is a, a challenge that I think we need to address to make an issue, uh, to make a difference and, and improve our small business success rate, is that our small business sector currently is very fragmented. It lacks coordination and it also lacks consistent standards. So I'm, I'm addressing some of the sh challenges, but now I'm going to go on to some of the opportunities and what can be done to address these challenges. And I believe that we need to really value entrepreneurial education all the way through, not only tertiary, but primary, secondary, all the way through. We need to start younger. 
We need to improve our mathematics scores in this country. I'm sure it's been mentioned here, and we all know that we are one of the last when it comes to maths literacy in the world. So we need to improve our mathematics scores. That is crucial for financial literacy. We should teach financial literacy more widely. There needs to be a greater emphasis on entrepreneurship skills in primary, secondary, and tertiary education curricula, and we need a greater availability of entrepreneurial skills development. And I'm not going to just come up here and speak about all that we are doing. We can send you a nation-building report of all the, the work that SICA has been doing and all the impact that we have been doing. But just to mention that the Hope Factory has been involved with this for over 12 years. We. We have been working with financial literacy in small communities. We've been working with skills development in, in, communi in communities. And we have launched recently a new venture creation program that essentially is, is teaching entrepreneurial skills to start up businesses. We would like to do that more widely because we know that there is a need. We also recently partnered and we are currently um, looking uh, rolling out a, a whole pilot with um, ASISA, the Association of Savings and Investment South Africa, where we are teaching financial literacy to micro-enterprises. They have named the, the, play, the project FLAME, which is Financial Literacy and Micro-Enterprise Project. And it's been really fantastic for these two bodies, SICA and ASISA, to start to address some of the real needs that are happening in communities. What what people don't often realize is that there's a great link between personal finances and the way that people actually uh, manage their finances and the way that they manage the finances of their business. We are also partnering with JP Morgan Foundation. Um, we previously did a pilot with them where we, we had 50 unemployed graduates, trained them up, and they did the books for small businesses. And that's th with that linkage with JP Morgan, they've also linked us to other initiatives initiatives worldwide who have started to study these links between personal financial literacy and business, literacy, uh, business financial literacy. Secondly, addressing challenge two, we need to prevent small businesses from closing due to financial reasons. And what we have the privilege, privilege to do, being part of SICA, is that we have access to the greatest minds in finance. And so we decided with SICA Enterprise Development that we're going to do just that and partner with them. But there are four aspects to this challenge. We really do need to address the ease of doing business in this country. We are ranked 131 out of 190 countries compared to Mauritius, which is 48. Um, we lack profitability in our businesses despite excellent, excellent financial skills that are available in this country. There's a difficulty to access finance despite there being a huge amount of funding available. And that's what really is so interesting, is that there are so, there's so much funding and so many funds available, but the businesses are not accessing these fundings. They are not getting funding. And that begs the question, why are they not getting this funding? There's up to estimates of 26 to 50 billion rand that is available in enterprise and supplier development funding in this country. So there's no lack of funding, but I know of a personally a fund, and I will rem it will remain nameless, but they have 600 million in their fund, and to date they have only dispersed 80 million of that funding. So, look, SICA is involved with this, but we need to also get reliable electricity, as this really affects small businesses very, very acutely. Thanks. So what is SICA Enterprise Development and how are we trying to partner with the profession and with any other in businesses or individuals who really want to address this problem? Well, we're looking at, a, we have a graduate program where we train up unemployed accounting programs. We are actually partnering with YES, with our second JP Morgan program and putting the next lot of, of um, accounting graduates uh, doing the books for small businesses. We offer, small account, uh, we, we offer accounting back office support through those unemployed accounting graduates who now become employed by small accounting practices. We offer finance boot camps to entrepreneurs. This is all dependent on us partnering for funding. We offer finance coaching to entrepreneurs. This is where members, CAs or AGAs, actually sit with the entrepreneurs and look at their books, look at their financial models, 
check the profitability of the businesses. So we are really preventing small businesses from closing by addressing this issue of financial excellence. Thanks. The next challenge. The third thing that we, we really need to partner with is that we need to call for government departments, DTI, Department of Small Business Development, CIFA, CEDA, all of the government departments, they need to be sta singing from the same hymn sheet or, or speaking from the same page to address these issues of the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor findings. We actually need a membership body that will create standards for business incubation that is recognized not only internationally, but nationally. We need the BE codes to also measure impact. We know that there are a lot of enterprise and supply development programs happening, and that is fantastic. But what is it leading? What are the results of these enterprise supply development programs? Are they leading to sustainable businesses? Are they creating new jobs? There should be a link between the BE codes and impact, else you're just getting money but no impact. And, the, and we need also the DTI to encourage and incentivize industry bodies to coordinate small business development per industry. So finally, I just want to end with a call, a call to action to partner with, with us. So firstly, be part of the lobbying for entrepreneurship education in our schools, that it is taught as a career option, a viable career option, and that it is, occurs through all educational levels. Secondly, partner with the Hope Factory or a CISA for offering more entrepreneurship programs that include new venture creation and financial literacy. Thirdly, partner with Psyche Enterprise Development to bring financial excellence to small businesses, enabling them to be profitable and access finance to grow. And fourthly, and lastly, a call for greater standards, coordination, and accountability in the small business development initiatives, including BEE, is needed. Thank you very much for your attention.